hello again. Nephilim Free has made a video entitled Thunderfoot Gets His Block Knocked Off, in which he shows an old robot game and starts banging on about nozzle size of water jets. To recap, Nephi, the great scientist with the newly found evangelistic zeal for science decided that water was squirted up through the Earth's crust, through an opening that God made in the Earth's crust, powered by the weight of the Earth's crust itself, which blasted craters into the surface of the moon and created all the comets. No, wait, was that refined to just creating comets, which then created craters into the moon? Not sure. Who cares? The point is, those meteor impacts have now got to be replaced by a giant hose pipe, inspired by God, which sends a huge jet of water into the sky and blasts away the craters in the moon. It must also be a conveyor belt for all the iridium in the Earth's crust as well. Something like this perhaps? Yes, a giant cosmic beer can with a hole in it. Now, Thunderfoot rightly said that there is not enough energy in the water to squirt it up that high. It's like a head of water in a toilet. Can you imagine redirecting the jet of the flush so it goes higher than the head that started it? No, it can never go higher than the original head because of the amount of energy stored in the head. Then Nephi changed the game. He said ah. What about the pressure of the Earth's crust and nozzle size? Well, here is an example of the best the Earth can do today, using the pressure of the Earth's crust, with a little thermal assistance. Then a whole host of videos appeared showing that nozzle size cannot make the jet go higher than the original head, no matter what. There were practical demonstrations of water bottles and water pistols, but, all to no avail. No. Nephi, Zeus bless him, went to the trouble of actually making a video tracking down Feynman's web pages to tell you what any child knows. Put your finger over the end of the hose pipe and the water squirts out faster. Yes, the back pressure builds up when you restrict the end of a hose pipe, and due to Bernoulli's principle, the jet goes a bit further. If the pressure is constant the jet will act as Thunderfoot showed experimentally with his constant pressure generators. This is classic misdirection and changing of the goalposts, as this is a completely different sort of system to the one originally described. In this video we hope to show how, no matter how much you bang on about nozzle sizes, the whole original idea that the craters on the moon and the comets and Noah's flood could all have happened by water from the center of the earth. Yes, the purpose of this video is not to blind people with science. If you cannot follow the fluid dynamics then there are much easier ways for you to make your minds up on this theory. Just look at the volumes and pressures involved and use your common sense to see if what Nephi says is possible. To begin with, we will use an animation and modeling program called Maya to give you some basic ideas of the sizes of the planetary bodies involved. We suggest that you put the video on high definition 720p and watch in full screen because of the scales involved, things tend to disappear. I hope you can bear with us as this may be difficult to see. Here is a view of the earth. A simple blue sphere. There is a grid which will give some perspective. The earth is 4 units of the grid. Now, on this scale, just for fun let's draw the sun. This is not directly relevant, I just like to get a feeling for the size of solar system distances. How big do you think the sun really is? It is this big. Let's zoom out. Of course this is not exactly to scale, and the units are rounded up, but it will suffice if you are not too literally minded. Now, where do you think this sphere of the sun really lies? This far away? No. Even Mercury is not this close. How about this far? No. Okay, let's disappear this sphere and redraw it the real distance. See how far away the grid is. The Earth diameter is a few units of the grid. The Sun is 12,000 Earth diameters away. Now should draw the Moon next to the Earth. It is one unit of the grid. This is close enough for visualization. Again, how far away is the moon on this scale? This far? No, let's zoom out a bit. This far. 
Now, let's remove it, and draw it in the right place. It is this car. It is 30 earth diameters away. Here is a marker to show it, because it is so small now. Let us look at the earth from halfway to Venus. From some angles it can look like we are a binary planet. This is how close people think the earth and moon are, as in this rendering. And sometimes the moon looks like a pebble in the sky like this picture. We are a very unusual planet indeed. Most people never think what we look like from space, because none of the pictures have earth and moon together. Let us get to the point of the water jet of God. Here is a reasonable size jet I think. To escape the earth's gravity, this is a good time to mention escape velocity. For the water to escape from the earth's gravity well, and make comets, or get to the moon, it must be traveling at just under 7 miles per second. Yes. 7 miles per second. That is the speed the Apollo 11 astronauts had to be traveling. Think of the Saturn V rocket. It took 5.6 million pounds of fuel to propel a 10,000 pound lunar module out of the Earth's gravity. Yes, so do you really think a jet this big can be propelled by ground pressure alone? Think of the picture of Old Faithful. And how long would this jet be? I think this shows you how long. Now I am going to animate the moon in a realistically scaled orbit to show you just how accurate God's water jet has to be. Well, he is God. Right, so anything is possible. You not only have to imagine that a cosmic hand squeezed the earth like an orange to get a jet of water like this without knocking the earth out of orbit, you must imagine he got enough water, close enough to the moon, to be able to either directly hit it or form comets that drain down enough water to cause impacts like meteors do. It's genius. Now, here is the clincher. How much volume of water is in that jet? Here it is, as a ball next to the earth. Now, supposing we go back to the original picture of the small jet. Here is the water volume of that plume. Believe it or not, this is a similar volume to all the water in all of the earth's oceans right now. It's the minimum required to make Noah's flood, and still not enough to make all the comets that are still there today, or lift all the iridium into space. Do you really think there is enough energy in the Earth's crust, or that this is how God would choose to flood the Earth? If I could create the heavens in one day, just magicking some water in magic rain clouds, and then fairy tailing it away seems almost logical in comparison. I'm not an American. However I like America, and love its people. As a six-year-old boy my jaw dropped as I watched Apollo 11 land on the moon. I bought into a dream of the awesome might of the United States as it managed a feat nobody else has ever even come close to achieving. But now we have Americans creating websites that say you never went to the moon, purely because people do not have the basic education in science to see how stupid the arguments are that suggest you did not go there. You can even see the module in a telescope and shine laser beams at the reflectors the astronauts fired behind. Now, you have nutcases who think God plays giant water pistol fights with the cosmos because they can't do a simple potential energy equation. Please tell me that education in the USA is not this bad. Please tell me that you have not degraded to this. We leave you with God's water pistol.